Okay. Let's try this. Hey there. Howdy. <laughs> I can't see very well. Hey guys. Bloody hell, it's hot in here. Um, I'm having trouble seeing you because I probably have the wrong glasses on. Because <laughs> um, you're too close. I can see you when I do this. <laughs> Um, maybe I should back up a little bit. How's everyone? Who's this? Howdy, uh, Penny Holmes. Hi, Penny. Hello. Uh, Lillian. Ben. Carolyn Girl. Howdy, howdy. Somebody hears me. <laughs> That's good. This is my first Instagram live. I've not gone live on Instagram before. Um, so I don't know exactly how it works. I assume it works similar to... Similar to uh, TikTok, I have done a couple of those. Um, kind of got my nerves <laughs> I, um, worked out in uh, in that form. How's everyone? So what can I do here? Oh, I can do video, I think. I can share a video, what can I do? Hello. Um, if the critters are outside, we're gonna try to go outside and say hello to them. How's that sound? Hello, Lois and Jane. So I'm in the shop. I'm fucking warm. Um, we're, we're getting ready to expect visitors back to the farm again, which is awesome. I'm really, really excited. We have had, we have had some visitors to the farm, I have to say. Um, we have had some visitor, visitors to the farm in the last few weeks, but of course, um, not like we're accustomed to. And yay! Uh, well, hopefully they're outside. It's been kind of a warm day and it's kind of the time of day where they kind of go into the barn to kind of chill for a little bit before they come back outside. Um, but we'll see what we can, we'll see what we can do. Um, anyway, so uh, for those who don't know, the island is kind of open again for business, which is wonderful, which means that people are gonna come to the island again. And people are going to come to the farm again. It would be wonderful to see people. And I can't wait to see my family. <laughs> that might be a little bit yet. Anyway, so we're busy in the shop. Um, uh, preparing for people to return. And we've got some new experiences for folks. So, I don't know if you can see this. I'm charging my battery so I can't go too far. Um, but I built a new shop last year. In the middle of a pandemic. So for anybody who has visited the farm before, or if you saw any um, uh, prior videos of the shop, my shop used to be in the barn. It used to be in the milk house of the barn. And it was only about 175 square feet. Um, and of course it wasn't heated. And we kind of outgrew it a number of years ago. Oh, thanks very much for the love, I appreciate that. We outgrew it a number of years ago. Um, and last year was our 10th anniversary and I had big plans for last year. So I had planned to build this last year. Um, hello all, all. Uh, and, um, January came and the contractor came for a visit and we sat down and I told him exactly what I wanted to build and you know, how big I wanted it and what I wanted it to look like, etc. And he gave me a quote and I'm like, oof, oof. <laughs> Um, but I thought, ah, it's going to be okay. We're going to have a great season. We've had a bunch of great seasons. This is going to be okay. So, uh, we agreed that the work was going to start in May. Anyway, March happened and the world kind of stopped. Everything kind of stopped. And I realized last March that, um, we weren't going to have a tourist season. And I thought, do I really want to spend the money to build a, a shop, a building, um, and I thought about it really hard. And then, you know, I decided, you know what? I think maybe I should. I think maybe this is a really good time for me to do it. So I went ahead and uh, I spent the money. And I built the shop. In retrospect, I'm very, very glad that I did um, because I was able to build it without lots of folks being around. I didn't have to worry about a lot of traffic. Hello, everyone. Uh, and also, um, I built it before the prices of everything went up. Had I waited, I don't think I could have afforded it because the price of lumber and building supplies have gone, has gone up so much. 
and there's so much construction going on, you can't get contractors anymore. So I'm really glad that I went ahead with it. And I really love my shop. Um, I'll take you on a bit of a tour as soon as my battery charges a little bit. Anyway, so I'm trying to say hello to everybody. Hello, I'm Janet, by the way. For those of you who don't know, I'm Janet. Welcome to the farm. <laughs> Um, you probably recognize me a little bit. Hopefully my voice you recognize. Um, so I've been in the shop uh, getting things prepared for the tourists to return and we're developing some new workshops. So because I've got the space now, I can offer some fiber related workshops, which I couldn't offer before. Because all the fibery stuff that I used to do, I used to do in my house. And I can't take tours in my house or I don't want to take tours in my house. But now oh, I've got this. Hold on, I'm going to take you on a bit of a tour here. Um, let's see what we can see. Bear with me. So. A bit of a round and up over. Oh, there's my fiber washer. I got a fiber washer. Oh, there's my light. That's my Belfast Mini Meals fiber washer. And then uh, I've got this whole area here behind me where we can do um we're gonna do dyeing dyeing yarns um hand painting yarns actually and uh we're doing some felting workshops too we're gonna do, be doing some yeah i'm hoping spicy spicy pj i'm hoping so um i'm just waiting for my battery to charge a little bit and hope hoping for the critters to come outside. I don't know how well the internet connection is gonna work in the barn. So we really need to be outside. But if I have to, I can entice them out maybe with some food. How's that sound? I'll get Griswold to come out and we'll feed him some apples. Anyway, so what do you think of this? So uh, I, I hired a shop assistant too, who is um, learning how to do some of the things that I do so that she can help me with the workshops. Hello, I'm trying to wave to everybody. So I'll take a minute to see whether or not there's, hello, lavender alpacas. So we dyed some yarn and we dyed some fiber as well, some braids. Um, so I'm pretty sure I've got a lot of people who are kind of interested in doing this kind of thing. So it's going to be fun, I think. What do you think? Do you think it would be, is that something you'd be interested in? Becca Berry. Hello. Hello, hello, hello. Let's see how, I'm trying to figure out how, how much my battery has charged. Hello. You know, I can't figure out how everybody gets their names. <laughs> De La Chale. De La Chale. My apologies if I said it wrong. Hello. If you wouldn't mind putting your, you know, name. <laughs> In the comments, then I know who I'm speaking to, please. I'm Janet, by the way. Thumbs up, thank you. What do you think of this one? This is Caroline, no, who's in here? This is Caroline and crew. What do you think of that? Oops. Hi, Debbie. Oh, Debbie. Hi, Debbie. Thank you very much. <laughs> what do you think of that? So what do I call, oh, hydrangeas? What do I call this one? Um, no, impatience. Impatience. As in impatient. Somebody is impatient. That's what it's called. And the reason I called it that, there's a story for this one. So um, I like to be pretty creative in naming, uh, naming the colors of my yarns. And um, I particularly like this colorway. I like the harmony with the you know, the purples and pinks and that kind of stuff. Hi, Ian. Thank you very much. Um, so this was, um, this was processed here on the island and died actually at um, Fleece and Harmony down in Belfast. So um, they process a lot of my, my fiber into yarn and uh, they happened to dye this. Anyway, they had a bunch of my fiber that they had been processing and they were dying for me. 
and um, they used to do Hello Willie Hooker and uh, McLaughlin. Anyway, um, they used to do an in-person knit night on Monday nights. We haven't been able to do that for a while, of course. Anyway, they were uh, dyeing up some of my stuff and this was actually sitting in a bag. Um, the whole lot was sitting in a bag and uh, Kim and Jennifer were getting ready to send it to me. And um, one of their participants in Knit Night saw it and was like, oh my God, I need that. I have to have that. <laughs> so Kim, met, or Kim messaged me and says, do you mind if we sell a skein of your stuff? And I'm like, sure, yeah, sure. So I called it impatient because Jennifer couldn't wait until I got it in my hot little hands so that she could purchase it. Lon Newfoundland, hello. Ramon from Honduras, very far away. That is very far away. Hello. So I'm just gonna check my battery here. I think it's it's I think it's pretty good. We're gonna try to go outside. I don't know who's outside. Maybe we'll get some apples, go see Griswold. And I'll pack it a day. A day keeps the doctors away. Or at least keeps you smiling, right? Yeah. Well, this morning, we had an interesting morning. Um, so I've got a, I've got about 36 animals, I think. 36 alpacas today. And, and Griswold, the llama. And I have five different groups. So boys and girls are always kept separate, of course. And I have three groups of boys. You probably recognize the little boys, the obnoxious teenage boys and the adult boys. And then I have two groups of girls, um, typically the mums and babies and then the rest of the girls. And um, so this morning, so Caleb's here, he's one of my students. So he was here getting, uh, he was doing feeding and cleaning and all that kind of stuff. And all of a sudden I kind of saw a bit of a kerfuffle out with the girls. I'm like, what the heck's going on out there? And I could see that the girls were very excited and they were paying attention to, to an animal. And I'm like, I think there's somebody there who's not supposed to be there. So I came outside and I'm like, Caleb, one of the little boys is, well, he's not the little boy anymore. He was a little boy last year. Now he's one of the obnoxious teenage boys. Is in with the girls. <laughs> um, so we had a little bit of chasing around to do <laughs> to get him back where he was supposed to be. It's a possibility that your son's going to study in PEI. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. What's he going to take? So it was Big Rec. You may remember Big Rec. He used to be one of the little boys. Now he's one of the obnoxious teenage boys. And he's pretty obnoxious, let me tell you. Hello, Bright by Design. How are you? What do you think of this one? I call this New Moon. Yeah. I'm saying hello to everybody. I'm waving to everybody. And that would really be a long way to come to go to school, but awesome. Okay. So yeah, I've been doing lots of dyeing in the shop, getting ready for the tourists to retur return. We were uh, felting up some dryer balls as well, um, because one of the workshops we want to do is felting. And we're trying to map out a combination of needle felting and wet felting, felting techniques and trying to find gorgeous oh this one yeah i kind of like this this is new moon by the way new moon um and trying to come up with uh projects easy to do projects that can be finished within the time available uh, in a traditional workshop. So we were making up some dryer balls to see see what the timing was going to like. We're going to use some of these dryer balls to actually needle felt as well. Love the colors. Thank you. Yeah, I kind of like them too. So these ones are kind of nice together, the two of them together. Right. Kind of cool. Kind of cool. And then of course we were doing um, the alpacas won't be used to the strangers. You mean my guess? Oh, they're used to people being here. <laughs> yeah, they're they're kind of used to it. Hello, hello, Ben. Nice to see you. 
Hello, Joyce. Nice to see you. I'm recognizing some names here. This is awesome. So my apologies. I don't recognize everybody's name. But it's nice that you joined in after lockdown, I mean. Well, you know, where are you from? It's Ian, right? Where are you from? Because um, here on the island, we've been very fortunate. We've been very, very fortunate. Yay! Well, you're not going to eat lobster on my farm, but come visit the alpacas for sure. Hi, Joyce. So um, here on the island, Ian, we've been, I'm assuming you're not from the island. Maybe you are. Um, but we've been very fortunate in that uh, we haven't really been in lockdown. Yes and no. You know, there haven't been a lot of people coming to the island, but those of us who live on the island have been pretty free in the way we've been able to move around. Um, we've been very, very fortunate. I'm very grateful, really, truly grateful <laughs> to live here for that reason. Um, and, you know, we did have visitors last summer. Not as many as I traditionally get. I usually get between 3,500 and 4,000 visitors a year uh, in the summer, between kind of May and October. And uh, our numbers were down probably about, I don't know, 75% last year. But um, because we didn't have people coming from off island, we had some people from uh, Nova Scotia, New Brunswick. Uh, we had a lot of the, the people who did come were from the island and what was really interesting is that uh, the people who came from the island were people who had never heard of us before. They were people who are from, you know, the other end of the island or Charlottetown way. We had lots of folks from Charlottetown, uh, Stratford, Cornwall area um, who came up west and they came to visit us. So because, you know, their vacation chance, plans had to change. They traditionally they would leave the island to vacation right and of course they couldn't well they might be able to leave the island but they wouldn't have been able to return or not easily anyway so they spent their vacation time here on the island and they participated in and visited um, uh, businesses that they'd never visited before so there was a bit of a silver lining for many tourism operators last year it was very hard there's no question it was very very hard um, but I think we may see the some benefit of what happened last year because there's more um, brand ambassadors here on the island, you know, to, to share our story <laughs> with their friends and family who come. So that was kind of that was kind of a good thing. Hello, Kyle. You're from Ireland. Oh, cool. Cool. There's a there's a bunch of alpaca farms. There's a couple nice ones that I'm familiar with in Ireland. Pretty high end farms. Yeah. Hello, Martha. So, if uh, my battery's reasonably charged, we might go for a walk. I think I'm gonna take this off. This is um yeah. There are. So, do you farm alpacas yourself, or you just follow uh, uh, alpaca farms? Not that there's anything wrong with that. I quite like that, actually. <laughs> quite glad that you do. Okay. Uh, let's see here. I'm going to unplug my phone. Bear with me. Uh, let's see what my battery's like. Eh, it's okay. It's not perfect, but it's okay. Okay, I'm going to take you on a tour of the shop. How's that sound? Uh, now I don't know how to turn my camera around. Hold on. Oh, go live in a room. No, I don't want to do that. How do I turn my camera? Oh, there it is. I saw it. There it is. Here we go. <laughs> so, okay. So this is where I was. So my fiber washer. A la Belfast Mini Mills. And then, uh... My kind of studio area where I still have some things to set up in here. 
Um, and then the main part of my shop. Isn't it beautiful? It is nice to have alpaca friends all over the world, actually. It's nice to have lots of friends all over the world. So what do you think of my shop? <laughs> Here we go. Just a fan. So, um, remarkably, virtually all of this stuff <laughs> was in my, thank you very much, Ian, was in my little shop before. Also the view, I know, eh? I love windows. And um, so south is there, that's south. Um, and of course the, uh, the big boys, this is the big boys paddock out here. They're not outside right now, but that the, that's the big boys paddock. So I've got five windows along here. Thank you, Joyce. And uh, I love windows and I love light. So I wanted a piano window in the back and at the side and the amount of light that comes in here it's beautiful i really really like it of course i did the vaulted ceiling and if any of you have been to the farm you'll know that my original shop um is lined with similar to this not not exactly it's kind of a faux log that's in my other shop i couldn't afford to do the entire <laughs> this entire shop that way so i just opted for one wall and i love it and then of course there's that. Can you see that? That's me. <laughs> that's from my trip. I'm going to turn you around again. Um, that's from my trip with Rachel when we went to uh, BC and when we kayaked Johnstone Strait. That's me. I love that photo. Rachel took the photo. It looks like a painting. It's, it's so beautiful. Anyway, um, let's try to go outside. Are you with me? Want to go? Okay. Hello. Let's try. Now, hopefully my connection stays good. Let's see. Oh, the boys aren't outside. Maybe the little boys are. So, adult boys are back there. Ooh. You can't see them. You see me. Sorry about that. <laughs> Let's turn around. Okay. Griswold, are you back there? Hey, Gris. Griswold? What you doing? I'm afraid to go inside because if I go inside, I might lose my connection. Griswold. Okay. We'll come back to see him. So the adult boys uh, are in the back of the steel barn. Oh. Then we have the obnoxious teenage boys up over here. So at shearing time, we moved some animals around. So we took the little boys from last year. So Airy, Archie, and Big Wreck. This is Big Wreck lying down here, the little bugger that was out this morning. Um, and the teenage boys got moved in. To I lost you. Doesn't like me going that far from the... Um, from the router. Let's try over here. You guys still with me? Hello. Somebody tell me you're here. Okay. Let's see what's going on in here. So, um, all the girls are inside. Oh, good. Uh, I'm going to turn the... Oh, no, there they are. So... Here we go. Hello, ladies. So as I said, it's kind of the time of day where they like to go in the barn. Give me a sec, I'll open the door. I don't want to go all the way in the barn because I might lose connection. So can anybody guess who that is? Anybody? Who might this be? Little girl. Who's this? Hi, Wendy. Hi, Trip. So this is Minnie P. That's Gracie. Up in the back over there. Oh, that's Magnolia. Yes, that's Grace. Gracie's to the left here. This is Gracie right here. You're looking at Gracie. Who's coming? Hey, you. 
handsome fella. It looks like my COVID haircut. You ought to see my haircut. I don't have COVID hair anymore. I have Hagrid hair. <laughs> so Magnolia is in the back. Uh, the fawn one there, that's Cherry. That's the um, nice haircuts. Yeah, not too bad. And then Shiloh is in there and Big Bella and Fiona and Foxley. Let's see if we can see the other girls because they're in, in the other side of the barn. What are you doing, girls? Oh, uh, I'm going to go over here. Hold on, bear with me. I hope I'm not making you dizzy. Fiona, yes, Fiona's there. Hello. Oh, you're fine, girls. I just opened the door a little bit. So this is Lily. Lily is mom to Dale. Oh. And then we have uh, Allie. There's Pearl. And then beside Pearl, lying down, is Roller. And Roller, I'm pretty sure, is pregnant. And then in behind over there, in the back, is uh, Sweet Streak. And then it, just on the other side of the feeder is Sahara. Hey, you. What are you doing there, bud? Oh, guess who's interested? <laughs> Hello. What you doing, ladies? Yeah. So, are you going to come outside for a little bit? I think so. Thank you so much for the love. So, is there a reason why you don't have gray, dark brown, black alpacas? I see you only have white and fawn. No, that's not that's not true i'm only showing you white and fawn alpacas uh, but i do have brown uh i don't have black anymore so hold on i'm gonna turn you around and have a conversation with you so uh griffin was my only black alpaca um and uh, i sold him a couple of weeks ago he went to a farm on the magdalen islands and uh but i have a number of his his offspring here on the farm uh, so when I breed them, assuming I do breed them, there is potential for me to get black. Um, I don't have gray because I'm not interested in gray. Uh, I'm actually not really interested in brown either. Um, I am interested in fiber quality though. So, and um, just like people, lighter fibered animals, lighter colored animals, um, tend to have finer fiber than darker fibered animals tend to generally uh, also it's really hard to dye or over dye black fiber so, um, and what you can over dye it as you're, you're kind of limited uh, so I do like the lighter colors so I don't want all white I do like the fawns I especially like over dyeing the fawn yarns because you get a really a really interesting uh, depth of color that you can't get when you dye just white ladies oh. Does that answer your question? Knitting with mob? View request to go live. I don't know how that works. How does that work? Going live with somebody? I'm not sure how that works. So you have to tell me. I have to figure out how that works before I'm willing to accept it. So knitting with mob. Sorry about that. Um, I, w I just want to go back here because the girls were uh, having a bit of an argument. I don't know if you heard it. Hey, ladies. What are you doing, girls? <laughs> Silly things. Waving, waving, waving. Oh, excuse me. So, uh, I'm trying to go back to your question. Oh, there's another question there. How long does it take for their hair to grow back, their fiber? So uh, they get shorn once a year. We shear in the spring, spring late spring. Um, this year we sheared a little bit earlier. Uh, shearing time for us is determined on <laughs> based on when our shear is available. So prior to last year, um, prior to last year, we um, we use the same shearer every year. He is an established alpaca farmer. He lives in New Brunswick. Um, and uh, he's a professional shearer and he starts shearing alpacas in Ontario in April and he shears all day every day and heads east and typically by the time he gets to my farm he's shorn probably 15 or 1700 animals that year already so he's quite talented um, 
Anyway, last year he couldn't come because of COVID. So um, we had to find somebody else. And um, so there is a professional sheep, sheep shearer here on the island. And she had done a couple of alpacas. And I had uh, actually messaged her a couple of years ago saying, you know, there's going to come a time where I know that my shearer from off island isn't going to, to return. He comes every year specifically for me because I ask him to, but I can imagine that there's going to come a time where he's not going to come. And, you know, would you be interested? Anyway, so when March came last year <laughs> and we shut down, I realized that my shearer was not going to be able to come. So I reached out to her and she agreed to shear. So she sheared last year for us and she, of course, sheared this year for us. What's my youngest right now? My youngest would be, who's the, it's not Whisper. Who's the youngest? Minnie P? I think Minnie P's the youngest. Yeah, I think Minnie P's the youngest. So she was born last July. So um, last year I had six babies born on the farm. I did lose one. I lost a little Katie. Um, but because I had six babies born last year and because of COVID, um, I didn't sell some animals that I had previously expected to. Um, yeah, give me a sec. Um, I didn't do a whole lot of breeding last year because I didn't know what this year was going to bring. So I thought I'd, t I'd take it easy. Uh, I did breed a couple of girls and I'm pretty sure that Roller is bred. Um, pretty sure I saw baby movement in her. She's the fawn girl. Oh, she's lying down right now. You can't really see her. Um, uh, but if she's, if, if I'm correct in that she's pregnant, she's not due until um, August, at least end of August, probably. So let's go love volunteering. Let's go see the youngest. I showed you, I showed you her already. So although she's the youngest, she's not a baby anymore. She's, she's juvenile. I guess. I'm going to turn you around. Get, bear with me. Hello, Bella. This is Big Bella. So, Minnie P. That's Minnie P. Little girl. And beside Minnie P, P is uh, Gracie. Hello, Bella. Ooh, close up. <laughs> With the lack of tours, how did I handle that? of interaction human interaction well as i was mentioning earlier living here on the island you know <laughs> um we weren't locked down like a lot of the country was well there weren't a lot of people coming to the island people who lived on the island were able to move around and you know i could go to a restaurant not that I did, I didn't. um i could go shopping not that i needed to if i wanted to but i could and people came here so we didn't have near the number of people that we typically had, but the farm was open last year. I had tours um, of Bella's festival. <laughs> oh, here's Fiona. Hey, Fiona. Uh, Joyce, I think you mentioned Fiona earlier. Oh, they're starting to come outside. So Fiona's outside. And who else is? That's uh, Sahara up over there. Allie's in the door up over there. Fascinator. <laughs> Mini peas, bang. Yeah. So we, I didn't. Uh, the short story is there wasn't a lack of human inter interaction last year. Um, my life, aside from not having lots of tourists here uh, during the summer, my life was not significantly impacted. Um, not compared to my friends and family in Ontario, not at all, you know, I work from home, you know, I have a full-time job, I work from home, um, so I'm not accustomed to seeing a whole, a whole lot of people, anyway, you know, I, I am accustomed to working remotely, so that wasn't new for me, I tend not to do a lot of stuff off-farm, so when there were restrictions about going any place, it wasn't restrictive to me. I didn't find it restrictive. Yeah. Oh, you're welcome. And where's home for you? Love volunteering? Let's go see if we can see you. What are you doing, ladies? Let's turn around. What's he doing? Hello, you. Sticking, you know, a phone in their face. 
little girl. You're not so little anymore. Hello, you. Say hello. Oop. Hey, you. Oakville. Okay. Oh, thank you so much. That's so kind of you. Hello, you. So, Fiona, what are you doing? <laughs> Silly girl. What you doing? Hello, cutie, cutie, Caroline. <laughs> She's giving us the side eye. Hello, Grace. I'm waving. Here you go. What you doing? So Shiloh is... How old are you this year, Shiloh? Shiloh is 11 this year. Oh, you're welcome. I think, actually, she might be bred. She's got that belly look to her, but I'm like, I don't have record of breeding her. It's either that or she's really fat, which could be the case because I got some really good hay last year. Great tour. Oh, I'm glad you like it, Deb. Is it Deb? Is it okay to call you Deb or do you prefer Debbie? It's your girl! <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> anyway. Um, let's go. Oh, are you, are you coming out? Come on, girl. What you doing? Come on. Hello, cuties. Waving to you. Oh, you can't see me waving. <laughs> what an idiot. <laughs> so this is kind of new new to me. This is the first time I've done a... a... You too. I wish you were here, honey. So this is the first time I've done an Instagram live. Um, it, it's a little different than a TikTok live. I'm trying to figure out um, all the things. But it looks like I can share some photos. Let's see. Okay. Oh, I think I can share video too. That sounds cool. <sighs> Laughing with me. Oh, thank you. When you. Oh, I can't wait for you to visit PEI either. So where where are you? Is it is it Jackie? Jackie Blue? Where are you located? Because the island is opening up. Now there are some. You know. Hello, Fiona. There are some uh, limitations. Oh, thank you so much. There are some limitations on... Um, you have to apply for a pass to come to the island of Ottawa. Okay. So, we, I believe we are starting to accept visitors from outside Atlantic Canada. Um, but you have to apply, of course. And you have to show proof of vaccination. But um, we're going to have visitors this year. Really? Do you know who Sahara's mom too? <laughs> Thanks for the love. There's Allie. Who's up over there? There's Fiona still over there. What are you looking at, Fiona? Shiloh's behind me with Mickey. Yay, soon. That'd be, yep. So Sahara is mom to Gracie. Shiloh. Now Shiloh's looking at it. <laughs> uh, there it is. I thought it was a piece of uh, piece of plastic or something. Yep. How you doing, girl? Yeah. So these girls will come outside. All of them will come outside in a couple of hours. And, um, it's a nice night. I think they'll probably sleep outside. Hey, girl. They all have different hairstyles, yeah. sound different actually too. Um, Fiona, what are you doing? What's with the ears, huh? What's you doing, girl? <laughs> what is she doing? Silly? <laughs> yeah, some are really t 
timid, like really, really timid. Uh, others are much more outgoing. Hello, you. What are you doing, Fiona? Hello, nit nit pickers. I think. <laughs> Hello, hello. Thank you very much for the hearts, for the love. That's awesome. So what questions do you guys have for me? I'm assuming you guys can still hear me. Yeah. So, uh, Big Bell is up over there. And of course, the rest of the girls are up in behind there. Can you see? That's Roller lying down, the fawn girl lying down over there. That's the girl who's pregnant. So this is my barn. Kind of old it's at least the main part of it is at least 140 years old yeah what do they eat uh danaluca designs i hope i said that correctly um what do they eat they eat primarily grass pasture and hay so um they are um they're not true ruminants not like a cow or a goat or a sheep um, true ruminants have uh, one stomach and four chambers. These guys have one stomach and three chambers, but they do ruminate. You can see Cherry, ru cherry ruminating over there. That's not eating, that's ruminating. Her uh, mouth is doing a figure eight. She's doing the Carlton dance with her mouth. That's uh, ruminating. She's chewing her cud. Hello from uh, Victoria, Australia. Woohoo! Thank you for joining. It's nice to see you. So we've got Honduras. We've got Australia, we got Ireland, <laughs> uh, lots from Ontario, we've got some from PEI, we got some, hi Janet Bob, we got some from, where else? Japan, hello, hello Japan, what time is it in, in Japan? Hold on, let me think, what time is it here? It's 7.25. I have a feeling it's about tomorrow morning in Japan. I live in Toronto, but originally from Mexico. And Michigan. Deb's from Michigan. Cool. We got folks from all over the place. This is really cool. I'm international, yes. So I have friends and followers from all over. California! Howdy! So for those of you just joining, uh, I'm Janet, by the way. I'm Janet, by the way. <laughs> Mine hair. I should really cut that down. I really should do something with it. <laughs> anyway, um, welcome to the farm. You've probably heard me. You see my animals, that's for sure. <laughs> what a mess. Uh, welcome to the farm. So this is my first uh, Instagram live. Um, I've been kind of chicken to try it. I didn't really know what to expect. Um, so thanks for joining. Really appreciate it. But, hello, oh, Ohio. 4.26 p.m. in Honduras. Okay, you're behind us. Yeah. But Japan, I want to know what time it is in Japan. Hello, Mom. My mom's here. Hello, Mom. <laughs> my mom's here my daughter's here I'm living the dream well that's kind of you I told you it's tomorrow morning I knew it was tomorrow morning in Japan <laughs> uh, mom somebody else is saying hi to you I'm going to turn you back around so you can see the critters again hi daughter <laughs> Rachel so <laughs> Somebody's saying hi to you too. So these are the girls. So mom uh, and Rachel, I renovated the barn. I hope I don't lose the connection. Um, but I took a wall out over there. Can you see? Hope I don't lose you. I took a wall out over there. Opened it all up. Oh, hold on. I don't wanna go too far in the barn. Um, I do. Um, because I'll lose a connection. Anyway. So they're enjoying it inside right now because they've been outside all day. They get to choose. My animals always get to choose where they want to be. Um, they always have access to the barn and outside. This group of girls actually have access to 
the paddocks up top. So this paddock over here and one up top, way up over there, way up over there. Um, whoops. Where is this group of girls going in there? There's two doors for them. Uh, they have access to this paddock here and there is another paddock in behind that they have access to. Um, and they spend most of the day outside, but this time of day, they uh, tend to head to the barn. Uh, it's kind of like they've had enough of the heat. And they come in here for a while and they chill and then uh, they'll go back outside again. Yeah. Mom, are you still here? <laughs> if you're here, say something. Hello, Jack and Skunk. <laughs> God, the mosquitoes. Yep, that's Bella. Bella's got a very deep. Do the girls fight? And if they do, do they get hurt? Yes, the girls fight. Um, is it Alicia? Uh, Kamara? What's your? I want to answer your question, but I want I want to make sure I have your name correctly. You asked about giving um, and warm shots. Hi, mom. Um. So do it first. Uh, love volunteering, Oakville, no Ottawa. My apologies. Do the girls fight? Yeah, they do. Um, most, most of the girls, uh, the fighting with the girls tends to be argumentative, <laughs> vocal. However, they do push one another around. Uh, Cherry tends to, Cherry and Pearl tend to get into it pretty good. Uh, they're the kind of the matriarchs of the herd and uh, they don't put up with crap from one another. So you'll notice here, Fiona's got her ears down. Look at Sh Shiloh there. Shiloh's on the, on the ground to the right. This is Shiloh up over here. Whoop! Oh, this... <laughs> scared the little one um and this is fiona of course that's bella up over here the fawn girl um fiona got herself a little bit too close to shiloh and of course shiloh um told her off which is exactly what bella is doing to fiona right now uh, you can see that fiona is uh turning away here her ears are down and her nose is down hold on i'm turning the volume down there's shiloh getting a little po'd at fiona again so um Alpaca spit. Uh, um, spitting is part of their communication system. It means back off, you're not respecting my, m respecting my space, and they spit at one another all the time. Alpacas are actually really good at social distancing. They don't like um, others in their personal space, and that's when they're going to get spit at. Um, and sometimes uh, some girls won't back down from the disagreements, so there'll be some pushing and shoving around. The girls tend not to hurt one another. The boys, however, are quite vicious with one another when they get fighting. All of my boys are intact, and the boys are intending to hurt one another. Uh, we intervene when we can, but intervening does not mean getting in, in the middle of them. That would be like trying to break up two dogs who are fighting. That would be very dangerous to do. Um, we'll turn the hose on them to get them to stop. So hold on a sec. Are all my girls pregnant? No, they're not all pregnant. I had a bunch of babies last year. Um, and because of COVID, I didn't make a number of sales that I was anticipating on. And I didn't know what this year was gonna bring. So I didn't do a whole lot of breeding last year. I've only got one or two who are pregnant for this year. Now back to the question about, do I give them monthly M-worm shots? So uh, I'm sorry, I don't know how to, pr I don't know what your name is. Um, but no, uh, here on the island, there are no deer. So I do not have to worry about monthly meningeal worm shot, shots. So for those who don't know, um, alpacas, most alpacas who live east of the Mississippi um, have to be treated every 28 to 32 days uh, with an injectable dewormer called ivermectin. You may have heard that. Um, because um, because of meningeal worm. Meningeal worm is a um, uh, a parasite that um, affects the central nervous system of alpacas and moose, actually. And um, if you don't treat them every twenty to thirty days, um, <laughs> you can lose some animals because uh, alpacas are a dead end host for that particular parasite. It causes, um, what happens is the alpacas will, a, a, a particular version of the, of the worm 
uh, is deposited in the feces of deer. And then what happens is there's a snail involved in the life cycle. So the snail kind of, you know, travels over the feces, the infected feces of the deer, and <clears throat> the parasite morphs into uh, a, a different larval form. And then alpacas, who are grazers, because they're not browsers, they're grazers, who tend to eat pretty close to, to the ground, um, pick up the slime dirt or slime, um, the snail dirt, excuse me, or snail slime and get infected with the uh, aversion of the parasite and when that enters the body it then the larval form actually travels to the central nervous system of the alpaca no there's no deer on the island jack um, the par the larval form uh, travels to the central nervous system the brain of the alpaca and it matures into an adult and when it becomes an adult it uh, it causes paralysis and eventual death so you have to treat alpacas every 28 days, 28 to 30 days with ivermectin to kill any larvae that have been ingested in the previous, you know, 28 days. And if you don't do that, um, it's problematic and there's no deer on the island. So I do not have to worry about treating every 28 days with ivermectin from a ninja worm. There you go. Yeah. Um, but other places in Atlantic Canada do. Um, so places like New Brunswick and uh, Nova Scotia, of course, have lots of deer. Um, but the folks I just sold animals to, I sold t a couple of animals to the Magdalene Islands. There's no deer on the Magdalene Islands either. So they don't have to treat prophylactically with ivermectin. It is a bit of relief, of a relief. I, I can't imagine having to catch everybody up every 28 days or every 30 days to inject them with ivermectin. Anyway, are you getting bored yet? Well, let's go see these girls. Are you bored? Let's see these ones. Wave and hello. So there's no deer on the island. There's no moose. Um, there is no wolves. There's no bear. Uh, the largest wild mammal we have on the island is coyote. Um, and they're not indigenous to the island. Um, they've only been here for well, 30 or 40 years. But I can't see you very well because I'm facing the <laughs> Who's this? That's Lily. Lily. Dale's mom. How many do I have and how do I tell them all apart? Well, I have today. I have 36 of them. This is Sahara. Say hello, Sahara. <laughs> and how do I tell them all apart? They all look different. They all look different and they all have different personalities. Now, I have to admit that after sharing, it's a little, it's a bit of a struggle to tell some of them apart um, because they look different, of course, uh, but I don't feel so bad because they don't recognize one another after shearing because they don't look the same and they don't smell the same. So what happens on shearing day is uh, all the animals get kind of locked inside the dark, uh, inside the barn and uh, each animal gets taken and sheared and once it's shorn, it gets let out of the barn. So what will happen is after the first one shorn, it comes out of the barn and it's all happy and jumping around and rolling around because, you know, got a haircut. And then when the second one comes out of the barn, the first one kind of looks at it like, who the hell are you? <laughs> and there's a whole lot of sniffing going on going on because they don't recognize one at all. Uh, so it takes them some, some time to get reacquainted with, with one another. Um, but we kind of use that to our advantage. Um, shearing day and shearing time is the time where we mix up groups of boys. I'm going to come back to that, Jack. Um, so, uh, as I mentioned, I've got three groups of boys. I typically run three groups of boys. You know, the little boys, the obnoxious teenage boys, and then the big boys. And we separate boys based on physical size. <laughs> what, the obnoxious teenage boys? Most people laugh at that. Um, Except, they've, except teenage boys. I have to be careful when I use that term. Anyway, um, so uh, so we set, separate boys based on physical size and mental maturity because boys fight and uh, little boys learn how to be adult boys by playing. <clears throat> and as they get older, their play gets more and more aggressive. going to fight. 
fight and it is going to escalate. So we want to make sure that at least it's a fair fight. Anyway, um, so because we separate based on size and maturity, there comes a time where animals have to move from one paddock to the next. And we need to do that in a way that is least disruptive. If I were to take um, a boy and just put it in with my adult boys, there's going to be a huge problem a huge problem because you can't just take an animal and introduce it introduce it to kind of an established herd not that their the hierarchy is static because it isn't it's constantly in a state of flux um but um the best time to do that that we found is shearing time because they don't recognize one another anyway <laughs> so what happens is, on shearing day is we take all the animals out of their environment Right? I'm moving the boys from the regular home. I move them into the red barn because we're going to, sh temporarily, we're going to shear them. Then we've completely insulted them by touching them and taking their fiber off. So they don't look the same. They don't smell the same. So when we put them back in, we add a couple of extra boys and they don't know it. <laughs> At least not right away. It takes them some time. So it's kind of like going to a brand new high school. Everybody, you, you don't recognize anybody anymore. And the, and the playing field is kind of leveled. We still have skirmish, skirmishes, um, but introducing uh, or moving the boys around at that time we found is um, the least problematic for us. So, that, so that's what we do. So uh, why some alpacas have necklaces or some places have necklaces on the alpacas. So what do you think of that? It's, it's a gorgeous night here. <laughs> um, there are lots of uh, lots of farms that I've seen that will have a kind of a plastic chain as a okay um, as a plastic chain kind of uh, ID. So some folks will do that, you know, depending on the size of the farm and how um, how you manage your animals. You might want to have some form of external identification, especially if you're relying on others who may not be as familiar with your herd to do to look after them right um, all of my animals are permanently identified with a microchip but I'm not walking around with a microchip reader to figure out who they are and even if I did the response would be a with you know 27 numbers um, what you do have to be a little bit concerned with if you're using a chain like that is just like with a cat or dog, if you're going to leave a collar on them, you would have to make sure it's a, it's a break free collar in the event that it gets caught on something that will leave easily break. So there's no, no chance of, you know, injury. And yeah, you know, it makes it easier to tell them apart. Um, it is a whole lot easier to tell them apart when they're colored. Yeah. Okay, now I'm the only one outside. <laughs> They're all inside. But it's a gorgeous night out here. It's really quite nice. Go up over here. Let's see if Griswold will come say hello. Because you might like to meet him. Oh, I lied. <laughs> She's still out here. Sorry. <laughs> I thought I was the only one out here. Oh, she's fine. <laughs> Okay. Okay. So, Mom, you haven't seen my shop. Are you still here? Hey, girls. Yeah, they're just chillaxing. They're just chillaxing. I'm trying to see who's here. So this over here, ooh, that was my prior shop. It's about 175 square feet in there of unheated space. It's not very big at all. I, look, I put a lot of people through there. <clears throat> Let's see. Griswold is inside or outside. I'm going to turn you around. Hold on. Griswold? Are you in there? I'm afraid to go inside because I'll lose connection. So let's see if we can 
see him over here. He's over here. Griswold? Hmm. Let's see if we can, if there's any apples on the tree. Let's see if he'll come for apples. Uh, hold on a sec, I'm going to turn around again. There we go. I'm going to go get some apples. I shouldn't lose anybody because, oh, here's Clarice. You can see Clarice. It's Clarice. What are you doing, little girl? So that's Clarice. Now, if you come to my farm, you will not see her. She's feral. And she's petrified of people. But she loves me. She really loves me. And I kind of like her too. I'm grabbing some apples. Hold on. There we go. Is he going outside? Is he going outside, little girl? There he is. Hello. Oops. I can't move. Make sure I got a knife here. Yep, got a knife. Hold on. Oh, there are some comments down below. Sorry, I didn't see it. Apples will bring them. No, apples are only going to bring Griswold. Griswold! My bud! Griswold! Come on, buddy. I don't want to go too far down because I'll lose connection. Where are you, bud? Is he coming? Let's go this way. Grizz? Hey, handsome. Are you in there? Come on, Chris. Come on, bud. Are you coming? Chris, what you doing? Griswold. Hey, handsome. Come on, bud. Where are you? I don't know what he's doing. Hold on. Ooh, thanks for the hearts. Griswold, look what I got. I lost you. I lost you. I can't stand there. Come on, Grizz. Come on, handsome. Come on, buddy. Look what I have. Come on, bud. Look it. Look what I have. Griswold. I don't know. He's shy. Well, as I said, it's kind of the time of day where they like to be inside. Griswold. Come on, buddy. Look, I have apple. <laughs> he knows he's on camera but he usually doesn't mind camera and he does love apples you bum I don't think he's going to come out oh well <sighs> so there you can see uh, the shop from this angle look at all those windows isn't it beautiful So, uh, we took down the fence, so uh, this used to be a um, garden at one point in time, and then a fence, and we took the fence down, and we moved the fence up over there, so the critters have a little bit more room, not a lot, and they have access to the shade under the tree, which I think they really like. Are you going to come, Grizz? I don't think he's coming. Oh, well. Elusive Griswold. Yeah. <laughs> I guess. I guess I'm turning you around. Uh, there we are. He's, uh, well, Griswold, he's not as young as he used to be. 
So Riz is at least 20 this year. Ouch. Oh, come on. Hi, Hal. Um, he's at least 20 this year. And he is beginning to show his age. Oh, you smarty pants. You did a good job there, Kaelin. Kaelin's so smart. Now he's standing up. Let's see. There he is. Hey, Grizz. Griswold. Can you see him? He's hiding. There he is. Come on, Grizz. Is she going to come? <laughs> come on, handsome. Come here, Grizz. Come on. Let's see if he'll come. Come on, Grizz. Griswold! Find my yelling. <laughs> Come on, Grizz! Let's go, buddy! Well, at least he stood up. He's a bum. I think he wants me to come inside the barn, but I can't go inside the barn or I'll lose connection. Back and forth, back and forth. Too funny. <laughs> Poking out behind the post. He's still there. Where are you? Uh-oh. There you are. What are you doing, Grizz? <laughs> what an idiot. He's an idiot. Oh. Uh, oh, crap. Hold on. I lost you. Uh-oh. There we go. Sorry about that. Oops. I don't know what I did there. Anyway, the bugs are picking up. I'm going to go and shop. Oh, Mom, are you still here? If you're still here, welcome to my shop. Here. Here. What do you think, Mom? Plain, yeah. He is. What do you think? Thank you. That's me. It's really nice, Mom. I really like it. So, everybody else is along for the ride. Thank you. So, who's interested in yarn? Who likes yarn? We got lots. So, this one here, this is Bella. Bella the ball. Oh, this is so soft. Uh, thanks, Deb. This is Griffy and Friends. So, um, Griffin is black. So, we blended Griffin with... Uh, Kaylin and Trooper to get that. Then this is Keating, I think. Keating and Crew, yep. And then we have some of the white boys, white critters. So Forrest, Foxley, Allie, and Lily. And then um, we added some, some uh, gray merino to this to get this. So this is Emperor. Griffin's your last name, cool. Um, so this is Emperor, Majestic, and Magnolia. And then we have Leo and Jordy. And then, what, who? this is Maggie and Quinn. And then we have, this is Caroline. Oh, you can't see that very well. So this is Caroline and Fiona. That's a big bulky yarn. And then lots of, lots of colored ones. I know that the, the sun is given a bit of a glare, but these, uh, these are beautiful. Quite nice. Yeah, it looks a little bit better. There we go. Yeah, quite pleased. Yummy. Yep. And my windows need to be cleaned again. I'm gonna come back over here and then we'll chat. Turn you around. There we are. Back in the shop. Give me a second while I get myself organized. So uh, we got to visit a little bit outside. Sorry the critters weren't more more active. It's just the time of day when they're not. They're in the barn at this hour. Ouch. Yep. Yep. I can't wait till you you can visit again, Mom. Uh, things are opening up, though. Yep. yep. Oh, this is the studio in the back, Mom. I'm going to show you back here. Fiber washer. 
we'll do workshops back here. Yeah. Hopefully soon. Yeah, hopefully soon. Anyway, so for everybody who's, oh, what happened there? For everybody who's still with me, thank you so much for joining. So um, I need to probably sign off. It's, uh, it's almost eight o'clock here and I need to do my chores. Oh, you're welcome. Oh, I'm really glad you enjoy them. That's very kind of you. So I'll endeavor to do more to do more lives on Instagram. As I said, this was the first time I, uh, I was a little nervous about doing them because I really didn't know what to expect. Um, but I'll do more. It was fun. It was a lot of fun. And hopefully um, I'll, do, I'll do some at a time where they're actually going to be outside. So if I don't have a tour tomorrow, I'm off tomorrow. So if I don't have a tour tomorrow afternoon, we'll try tomorrow afternoon. Hey, Joyce. Everyone have a wonderful evening. If you, ha if you don't already follow me, please follow me. Um, check out the website. You can get all of these things on the website and more. Um, you're welcome. And if you're interested in doing a tour or a workshop, dyeing or felting, um, yeah, you can book those online now. Anyway, bye. Thank you. Have a great evening. See ya. Now I gotta figure out how to turn it off. I don't know how to turn it off. <laughs> Bye. Oh, I think so.